using N-Track Recording Studio. This is a demonstration of how I use N-Track Recording Studio in virtually all my recordings. Out of the hundreds of programs out there, N-Track is my software of choice and I hope you'll see why I think it is a great option for anyone wanting to record from a computer. There will be links to their website both from the description link below on YouTube and also from my website gdogenterprises.com. One great advantage is the low price, only $64 currently, having the power of programs costing hundreds of dollars, and since my original purchase over four years ago, I have been offered over a dozen upgrades free of charge. None of the upgrades has ever had compatibility problems with later versions. I strongly recommend paying another $15 and getting the program shipped to you in CD form. That way, if you have to install and have trouble accessing the internet, you can still get to work. Another great advantage is ease of use. In fact, after watching this lesson and a little practice, you should be able to do most of what I've learned to do in over four years of experience with this great software. As a final advantage, you will have great customer service. Most of my emailed questions have been answered within a few hours. I upgraded recently to version 6.0.9 and paid the upgrade price of $34, not because I needed it, but only because I wanted to use a fully updated version for this lesson. I will not likely be asked to pay for another upgrade in a long time. This is the downloading window from the website. And here's what you see when you first download N-Track. You will be asked for your registration code, which you can enter after you've paid for the product and received the registration codes via email. If you don't pay for the product immediately, you will still be able to use the software for up to 10 days to get acquainted with the product to be sure you really want to buy it. When the program first comes on, you'll see this balloon in the upper left telling you where to click to start recording. One of the first things to look for is the recording view meter in the lower left of the window here circled in red. The changing green level shows the microphone to be active. If it doesn't move, you'll need to activate the computer's microphone by going to Programs, Accessories, and Entertainment, then go to Volume Control. From there, go to Options, then Properties, then click Recording to activate the soft microphone. If I use my computer's built-in microphone, the recording sounds a little muddy, so I like to use an exterior microphone that I plug in here at the computer's input. I frequently get asked about my recording studio, if I have one at home or if I rent one. This is my recording studio, wherever I am with my computer and some quiet time. Most I do from my living room. And here's the microphone equipment I use. I have an Audix OM2 mic on a mic boom so I can record hands-free. Going hands-free avoids opportunities for static from moving the mic. I'm holding the sock that I'll place over the mic so I can talk or sing into the mic without picking up the popping sounds from the popping explosive consonants such as B's and P's. I make two types of recordings. The kind I'll show here is the soundtrack of an instructional video. For this kind of presentation, I create the narration track first, then I edit the recording and add some background music. I can alternatively put down a music track first, then sing, rap, or talk over the music and synchronize precisely. I get everything all set, the microphone in front of me in the position I want, and the narrative script laid out, rehearsed well enough that I have a fair chance of making good on my first attempt. For most of these scripts, I use the notes view of PowerPoint. When it's all set, I click the record button, the little red dot, and then I start talking. And here after recording for eight and one half minutes is what we see on the graphic interface. Before we go into editing the track, I want to give a quick tour of things to notice. These two lines are files or tracks on my recording. This window at the bottom left called the navigator shows how much of the total recording tracks inside the red rectangle are shown out of the entire recording so far. These numbers on top of the recorded tracks show the time of the recording in minutes and seconds. There are two ways I can move to different times along the track. I have a slider here at the top where I can move to any point I want in the recording, just like placing a cursor. And I can see different portions of the recording track using the slider below the tracks. Now I'm going to start editing my recording. The first thing I'll do is eliminate one of the tracks. I only have mono recording equipment, so editing one track is a lot easier. I right click on the bottom track, then I go to remove the track here and it asks if I'm sure I want to remove it. Go ahead and click OK. And now we see just one track. Now we'll go here to the upper left to store as it is a file whose name we'll recognize. We click File in the upper left of the window, then go to Save As. I enter my desired file name, Solving Holy Grail, then press Save. Now after saving, back to the main screen. We're going to use the zoom buttons here at the upper right to take a better look at the soundtracks to see if there's something we want to do to edit the track. These buttons adjust the vertical amplitude or scale of the wave as well as change the horizontal or time scale of the tracks. In this view, I've amplified the track vertically and changed the time frame horizontally from 0 to about 40 seconds. All these segments shown here with the red arrows are where the sound signal is very low. In other words, I'm not talking here. These pauses can be cut out or reduced to save time or remove awkward pauses. 
The opening pause is about five seconds, so I'm going to edit that down. I do that by placing the little white cursor arrow here at about the three second mark, and while holding a left click, moving the cursor to the left, highlighting the first three seconds of the track. Note the lighter gray vertical stripe highlighted at the beginning of the track. And that can be cut either by going to Edit, then Cut, or just going up to the little scissors or Cut Shortcut key up here. And here we see it edited out or cut out. And now we can move the remaining track where we want by going to the little X at the bottom left of the track. Every piece of track you cut will be a segment that can be moved around by placing the cursor here at the little X at the lower left corner and dragging it wherever you want. And while holding down with the mouse, we drag it to the left, saving two to three seconds. Notice the change. The next thing I do is use the slider on the bottom to look to the length of the track, looking for big extreme spikes or amplitudes, which indicate static we might want to cut out or re-record over. It all looks pretty good. Here's the end of the track at the right. I see over five seconds of dead track at the end. I highlight it like we did earlier, dragging the cursor across it, then cut it also just like in the beginning by using the little scissor shortcut key or going to edit cut. Now I slide back to the beginning of the track and this is where that slider is at the bottom of the track window. Now I go up to the little green play button and I press it to play. And as I play the track I do two things. First I listen to how it sounds. Next I notice that the volume is kind of low so I go over to the track mixer slider here and I move it up. I moved it all the way up. When the sound is so high that it distorts, little red tick marks like this one appear above the tracks. If there are a bunch of them, you'll want to lower the volume some so that the soundtrack will not have the fuzzy distortion from being too high. It's all a matter of your judgment. Now I'm going to locate some background music to put behind my narration. I go to File, then to Import Audio File. This is the resulting Import WAV File dialog box. I go to my shared folder where my sound files are located and highlight the guitar instrumental I want to use for background. I double click and it sets the track right below my narration track. I adjust the view to better see my tracks using the zoom buttons up here at the upper right. I can see down here in the navigator that the instrumental music will not cover the entire narration, maybe only about half of it. So I import it again through the same process going to File, Import Audio File. I can use the same file or a different one. Here is the same file right below the first imported file. What I do now is grab the handle of that second wave file in the lower left corner of the track I want to move and drag it to the right. Keep on dragging until we're to the right of the first one, and here it is to the right of the first track we imported. Now drag it upward to be next to the first wave file to become part of track two. We can see in the lower left inset in the navigator the background track is now longer than the narration, so that has to be fixed so that both are about the same in length. So we use a slider to go over to the very end, sliding all the way to the right. We highlight the leftover wave file we want to cut, then cut with the scissor shortcut key up here. And since the soundtrack cuts off sharply, we're going to do another editing to fade it out. I'll highlight about the last 10 seconds of the background music like this, then go up to the fade out envelope and press it here where the little white cursor arrow is located. This does a nice logarithmic fade. Now we have to go back to the beginning and press play to get the background at the right level. Notice how the background music, the soundtrack, below has a much greater amplitude than the vocal track above. That means that the music track will have to be taken down in volume using the track mixer. And you might be able to see here that track 2 is taken down to negative 24.1 to get the kind of balance I want between the background music and the narration. Now I've listened to the whole soundtrack and I like it pretty well so I save it. There's one last step in today's lesson, and that's putting the soundtrack together into a WAV file. To do that, stop and go back to the beginning and choose File, then go to Mix Down Song. Go to where you want to save your file. I went to Documents and Settings, User 1, Application Data, and Track Studio 6, and I typed in Solving Holy Grail. I made sure it was where my original saved SNG file is. Click to enter. We get the Mix Down Song dialog box. Press Start. The status bar shows the progress of creating the WAV file. And when it's done, this pops up the N-Track Studio 6 dialog box. Now we can move the cursor over the WAV file to see what we have. It shows a WAV file of over 90 megabytes, a very large file. Over time, you can free up space, organize, and back up like you know you should by saving your soundtracks onto CDs or on a backup hard drive. That about wraps up this lesson. As you can imagine, we've only scratched the surface of what this software can do, the proverbial tip of the iceberg. I've shown you how I make over 95% of my soundtracks. About the only stuff I do of greater complexity is put some additional tracks in. This has been using N-Track Recording Studio. Thanks for viewing.